you can use because it's so accessible. You can get it in so many places. It's just a dowel rod. This one's oak. You can get it in oak. You can get it in poplar. It's a little bit not as strong. Or you can go stronger with hickory. You can get it at a lot of hardware stores. It comes in 36 inches. Or you can go 48 inches if you want a little bit longer. Depending on how tall you are, you might want a little longer, a little shorter. You use a piece of sandpaper, two or three different grits. I start with a really coarse grit, like 80 sandpaper, sand off the rough stuff, the splinters that might go in your hand. Then you go about 120, and then finally 220. Make it really smooth, soak it in some oil overnight, something like mineral oil, or just soak it down with a rag really well. Do that two or three times in a week. Do that for the first four or five weeks, and then you have yourself a very strong, flexible piece of oak, hickory, or whatever yours is made out of that you can use for self-defense. Let's talk about how to use the self-defense walking stick, one of the most perfect homemade self-defense tools you can have. There are a lot of different categories of self-defense tools. Homemade is one of the ones that I like, improvised and homemade. Now the walking stick at 36 inches is the perfect height. Most walking sticks come at 36 inches. So if you were to buy a walking stick, you would have this height so you can train with this and then if you use a fancy walking stick or a nicer one, you'll know how to use it for self-defense. Start with your hand on the top of the stick. You would hold it in the hand of the opposite side of the body that might be injured, right? You might have a knee problem on your left, or in my case, my hip's a little tender. So I'm gonna put my hand on the right. That allows me to walk with it as a uh, walking device, as a mobility aid, as a medical aid. But you might just wanna carry yours simply for self-defense. And don't worry about what it looks like. It just looks like you're carrying a stick for self-defense. So your hand will come down the back of the stick. This is the first way I want you to train getting into a ready position to defend yourself. If this is the threat, we're gonna call this training bag the threat. I slide my hand down the back and then I can immediately address the threat by sticking this hard piece of wood right through his face. So from here for self-defense, I slide my hand down, I'm gonna step in, extend my arm all the way, and rotate the shoulder a little bit. That's how you're going to create maximum stopping power. Let the stick do the work. You're standing here, the guy's getting too close, you give the verbal command, your other hand is up, back up, I'll defend myself. You simply slide your hand here, step and thrust as hard and as fast as you can right into the face to try, to, uh, try and stop the attack. Now, if you can avoid a fight, always avoid it. Avoid a violence when you can. Um, situation awareness is the first rule of self-defense. First principle means that you would be paying attention. Don't go into a dark alley at night by yourself if you don't have to. But maybe you don't have a choice. Maybe you have no other choice than to go about your life the way you normally do and things are getting more dangerous. So you choose to carry the walking stick for self-defense. The perfect homemade self-defense tool. You're gonna slide your hand down the back thrust here and then pull it back and then swing it. I want you to swing your whole body, extend the arm, and then if you want, you can take a little step with that foot and you're gonna hit so much harder and faster when you do those three things again. Rotation, full extension of the arm. In this case, it's coming around, but your arm is still extended and taking a little bit of a step to generate maximum stopping power in any technique a palm strike, a punch, an elbow strike, or a strike from the perfect self-defense, homemade self-defense walking tool. You get maximum power, stopping power, knock them out power for self-defense. When you extend all the way, rotate through your shoulders and hips, and then when you can, take a little bit of a step, get your body in motion, all of the weight of your body will then be transferred into the striking surface. In this case, this long piece of oak and this is a diameter it's a little bit bigger than most will get um, you'll see one inch is very common but this is an inch and a quarter so this is a little bit thicker and i'll tell you i have both i have a one inch and i have this one i like this just because i've got big chunky hands and this one's a little bit feels nice when i do my rolls and that kind of stuff for training not for striking or if i do my finger rolls it really stretches them out but it's also the weight when you strike for self-defense, you create a lot of stopping power when you have a heavier, thicker stick like this. And this still costs less than $10. Homemade self-defense tool, the walking stick. You go to the hardware store, pick yourself out 
a piece of wood, like I said, 36 inches, you could go 48 if you're really tall. Get three kinds of sandpaper. You can buy them uh, in a sheet. Each sheet will be about a dollar or less. Go for like 80, 60, or 80 grit. Get the nasty stuff off, the thick, hard, uh, the splinters that are gonna go into your hand. Then go to the 120 grit and knock it down, make it more smooth. It'll still feel a little rough, but that's where the 220 sandpaper grit comes in. And then finish it off with that. The whole project's gonna take you like five minutes, however long it takes to get to the store and back, plus about five minutes of sanding, about a minute each, and then you take a rag, you put your mineral oil on it, or boiled linseed oil, some kind of wood preservative, and nourishing uh, oil, and that goes into the wood. When they make these and they sell them to the hardware store, before they ship them out, the lumber company will kiln dry it. They'll suck all of the water out of it in an oven. That means it uh, won't rot, that's why they do it, but it's also more brittle. When you put the oil on it and you start to oil it every single day and then you do that week after week, and, and then after about the first three to six weeks, you won't have to do it all the time. You just do it every once in a while, every couple of weeks or so, and then after a while, every month or so. But that, you can see, it gets this nice sheen on it, but it's also very flexible. Not flexible like you could bend it, but flexible enough so that when you strike with it, it doesn't break. That comes from the oil, that's why the oil is so important. So a little bit of sandpaper, less than probably $3. The wood itself, uh, I got some of the, the ones I got last, the last time, they were on sale 50% off. You can find them at hardware stores, sometimes dollar stores will get an overstock of stuff like this. You can pick them up for a couple bucks. But it's just an easy to make, very accessible. You can find these anywhere. I even put links below. If you wanna see, like go to Amazon, click on the link below and it'll show you um, you can buy these online and they'll ship them to you. And if you have Prime, it's free shipping. Back to this basic position. I want you to practice sliding down the back of it, thrust into his face, turn your whole body. Remember the shoulders and the hips, swing it in. And I don't really care where you hit at the beginning, but later you're going to get better at accuracy. You can go to the face, you can go to the neck, you can go to the ribs, you can go into the waist. You can even aim at that floating rib, that last rib drive that through his lung, coughing up blood. He can't chase you if he can't breathe. For self-defense, that's your goal. You can even start to bring it lower into his leg, into his knee. Go for a joint. You wanna stop somebody faster, strike a joint, a wrist, an elbow, a shoulder, the knee. Those will break easier than the bone itself. The joint as it goes in there, there's all kinds of pressure and tension on that already. You just add to it with that hard piece of oak as you strike through here. After you do that strike, I want you to pop it into the other hand. You're going to do that simply by pulling your hand up here like you're going to touch your own cheek. You're guarding your head. When you do that, bring the other hand in and then drive straight in and through the middle of his body. Think of solar plexus driving him back and into the ground for self-defense. So from here, you're in this better position. You, see, you sense the threat. You couldn't avoid it. You put your hands and you say, back up, I'll defend myself. You slowly, this hand right here, slide it down. Now you're ready. You step in and thrust, pull back a little, swing through his face, bring it up to your cheek as you step through and thrust, just like a bayonet attack with, uh, in, in the military, right? You're stepping in, driving it as hard and as fast as you can. Now here's how it works, because this hard wood is harder than his nose, teeth, throat, eyes, solar plexus, uh, groin, and all of your body weight is behind it from extending the arms, rotating the shoulders and the hips, and stepping in, you're gonna be able to drive him into the ground. Hello, Richard. I think I saw Doug here earlier. Hello to everybody who's here. Thanks so much for being here. We're working with our Japanese Hanbo, or the Okinawan Hanbo, all the way, otherwise known. Good afternoon, Wilson. I haven't seen you in a while. It's good to see you as the walking stick or the self-defense walking stick. And this is the best homemade self-defense tool because it's, it's everywhere. It's so easily accessible. You can even get a sapling or a branch from outside and make your own. It doesn't have to be a store-bought piece of wood. It doesn't have to be a dowel. It could be a nice stick. You can even get, um, hey, it's, uh, oh, Weldon Cross. Nice to see you, Weldon. Sorry, I gotta get close to see you anymore. And uh, who else we have? Take off the glasses, I can read it. Oh, zero gluten, and Wilson's there again. All right, you've got your, in, uh, zero gluten said he's got his in hand. So let's talk about, from this position, better position, 
stepping in and thrust, strike here, pop it into your face as you step in and strike through. I've got one more I want you to try from this position, which is slide your hand at the end and just bring it down on top. And it's, all of these are pretty much in the center line, except that one. So from here, my hand's here, I step right into the face, I bring it around, catch him on the blind side, I bring it up, now the stick's between me and him, stick it through, slide my hand down, and just straight on top. Now don't let your hands come together, that creates a pivot point, you can over rotate and lose control of it, and I always want you to keep it between you and him, just like a katana or a sword, keep it between you and the threat. Anytime I say katana, I see my hands twisting out, trying to get in the right position. I don't want to show it wrong. But don't overthink it. So you're simply creating distance, stopping his advance, stick it right through his nose for self-defense, through the face, in through the body, down on top of the head. Now this is practicing techniques in a combination. That doesn't mean those are the only ones that you're going to use or that those are the ones you will use or in the combination. What that does is that just gives you something to train with so that you can get it into your muscle memory. Then, in the real life self-defense situation as you're walking down the street with your walking stick, you don't have to think about it so much. The only one question you'll ask is, what target will I remove or destroy? Target acquisition. I'm going to think about when I realize I must defend myself physically or there's a good chance I'm going to because I can't avoid it. I'm going to say to myself, <laughs> Where am I going to hit this person, right, for self-defense? What am I going to remove or destroy? His ability to see me, his ability to breathe, his ability to be awake. I'm going to knock him out. His ability to, uh, I'm going to strike his neck and knock him out, go through the throat. That's permanent, right? You're going to take away his ability to breathe forever. That's the end of the fight for self-defense. Horrific to think about, but so is his attacking you, trying to take your life, your dignity, your freedom, your st whatever it is he's trying to take from you. Uh, striking right in the solar plexus. His ability to stand up or catch his breath or lower between the belly button and the private parts. Maybe that's where you're going to strike. That's not, he's not going to be able to move very much. Or like I said before, take out a knee or just smash that thigh. And here's the other part of it. If you make this decision, okay, I'm going for his ability to breathe, I'm going for his throat, and you strike, you're not done. You're not done unless he's done. The fight's not over until you win. This is a self-defense principle. I'm going to strike one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, I'm over and over. I want you to get into the mindset of the fight's not over till you win. So, and you're going to think of the terms, another self-defense principle, violence of action. Violence of action means fast and over and over and over again. When I would watch certain um, self-defense professionals who protected the children of a billionaire, he had five children, they would get together and they would do, and, and it all comes from, uh, uh, a lot of it came from the Tony Blower system, the spear system, but they would they would do these palm strikes and elbows, and knees, but and they would hit the person as they're going to the ground as hard and as fast as they can. I also saw this with uh, Secret Service agents as they would train. They would come in and just the overwhelm the bad guy, the guy who was playing the bad guy. They would hit them so hard, and they didn't pull punches either. I mean, there were a lot of broken noses and blood everywhere and loose teeth. And they would just strike hard and fast, but it was over and over again until they demolished the threat. They removed the threat completely. There was no question that that person was not getting back up off the ground. They were going to do as much as they could as the person was falling to the ground to make sure they didn't get up. That's how I want you to fight for self-defense. That's how I want you to think about those are principles of self-defense, not necessarily techniques, but we do have to practice technique. Now, the second way you're going to get into this defensive position by sliding your hand down the front and pick it up. Every time I do that, I remember that old TV show, Walking Tall. Do you remember that with, um, I won't be able to think of his, his name, Sheriff uh, Buford Pusser or whatever his name was. And he was, he would, in the movie, Brian Dennehy maybe, he would slide his hand down that big piece of wood, <laughs> walk quietly and carry a big stick or speak softly and carry a big stick. Walk quietly, that's the Native Americans thinking of a whole different movie. That's John Wayne. But he would slide his hand down and he would pick it up and then he'd go to work. He'd have to get some work done. But that's how I want you to think about getting into this second position. From this position, maybe you see the threat coming this time and you just say, hey, you're too close. Now this hand is open. This is the international sign for stop. You're not fighting, you're trying to stop the fight. Anybody watching this, anybody, they say, well, he picked up a stick. You say, yeah, but he also had the other hand up and he's saying, 
back up, I'll defend myself, don't come any closer. Now from here, you have that immediate thrust to the face. If you have time, you can slide the other hand onto it so that you can accelerate the speed of the strike while also strengthening that strike. So from here, in this position, I slide it down and I'm just in this position, I'm just gonna go straight in if I have to. Think about what's going to really happen. He's running into this piece of wood in his face, in his teeth, his mouth, his throat, or his solar plexus, depending on where you're able to hit him. And he, it's, this isn't gonna collapse. This isn't a piece of paper. This isn't gonna fold up. This is not gonna come out of your hand. And your grip is gonna be strong enough in this position. If you're down here and you're just pointing it at his face, the wood is against his nose, against his teeth, against his throat. It's not against the stronger parts of his body. If you go in against his pectoral muscle and he's a big dude, or he's a big heavy set guy, you're going against his belly, that might not be as effective. But if you're sticking it in his face, he's gonna have to respond to that. Or, if, like I said, if you can, put that other hand on it. Now this is that push-up grip, and this is a very effective grip for self-defense. From here, you know, you're too close, I can strike with one hand, I can strike with two hands. I can bring it up and thrust down and in. I can turn and bring it through the side. I can bring it down over the top. You can snatch him up right between his legs. From here, I can swing and take out that knee joint, all from this position. So from this position here, I'm just, hey, you know, you're getting too close. <laughs> he might have a knife, but you've got a long piece of wood. That's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but you, it's better than trying to take it away with your hand. So from here, I put it down here, back up, you're too close, threat. Put this, st stick it right in the face of the threat, right? From here, you, like I said, if you can, step in and, and strengthen it, give it more power. Coming in here, coming down here, coming from the side, coming up under the legs, or slide your hand down and change from this position. Now you're striking here or put your hands in the middle and blast, push them straight back. Two hands, your two hands, your two hands on your staff, your homemade self-defense tool, the best one you can have, right? Your homemade self-defense walking stick through his nose, through his teeth, through his throat. This is extremely strong. It's not gonna go through the back of your hands and you're very strong. And if you step while you're extending through his face, it's, it's just a basic, principle of self-defense, hard wood against flesh and blood and teeth and eyes and nose and glasses, maybe, and throat, right? That's why this is effective. That's why it's good for senior self-defense or it's good for women's self-defense or somebody who's not as strong as the uh, person who's attacking them or multiple attackers, right? I can hit this person effectively. I can bring that through here. I can swing that down there. I can slide in here, slide in there and I can move, and with very few steps, not moving very far, because I have that reach advantage, I can reach out and hit and strike multiple people if I have to for self-defense. Now, I don't want you to have to fight if you don't have to. If you can run, run. If you can hide, hide. But when you have to fight, if you have the best homemade self-defense tool, the homemade self-defense walking stick, you're gonna have extra reach, you have reach advantage, you're gonna have speed and power more than you do naturally with your hands and your feet. And the stick doesn't bleed. If they've got a knife or another weapon and this takes the brunt of it, I'd rather, it pulls out that knife, I'd rather this get cut than this, right? Or this, or this in here, or like this and you get sliced up. Or maybe he's got a baseball bat. I've, you've seen that a lot lately. Uh, baseball bats and uh, this Antifa guys have been using a lot of skateboards, baseball bats, canes. They've been using a lot of weapons to hurt innocent people. And as they're swinging, innocent people who don't have training, and you're getting training right now, if you don't have training, it's, you're naturally recline or uh, recoil. And when you recoil, your hands open like this, exposing all of these vital spots, exposing these vital spots, and then it's just, it's horrible for the person who's not trained. But if you have, the training tool, you can train that when they pull that thing up like this, you stick that right through his face. I don't want you to block it. I don't want you to parry and block and, and move it around and, and try to spiral block. Don't do the spiral block. 
If you see that you're in danger, he's getting ready to hit you with something, stick that through his face. That's the fastest way to stop him from hitting you. People think it's a block. So they ask you all the time, well, what? If he's, if he's swinging like this, which block do I do? Do I do this block? Do I do this block? Do I uh, reach in and twist his arm and put him on the ground? No, you take this, the end of this, this hard piece of wood and shove it right through his throat or in his eyes, in his nose, in his mouth. Stick it into his teeth. Knock those teeth back into his mouth and hopefully you'll hit with so much force, lights out. And then you don't have to worry about the knife. You don't have to worry about what other weapon he's gonna use. When you're using self-defense, I want you to think of being aggressive, being more, using violence against him. Whoever is going to, uh, whoever strikes first is often, and inflicts the violence first, is often gonna win the fight. That's the basic rule. I didn't make that up. I read that in um, Tim Larkin's book. I don't know if any of you guys follow Tim Larkin. If you don't, you should, if you're serious about self-defense. Tim Larkin and Tony Blower, at a minimum. And then come and learn how to use a self-defense tool. I'll teach you that. All right, so we have, sliding down the front, we had sliding down the back, and I wanna talk about just carrying it in your hand like this. You might just be out for a walk or you're, um, you, know, you have to walk out at night to the car, and I know, it, it looks more aggressive, right? And it is, but let's say you don't feel as safe. Well, this, this is, you, you feel you know, a little bit more safe, <laughs> and, and it's disguised, it's a self-defense tool, it's homemade self-defense. This is, I know that there might be a threat. I gotta go to the car at night, I'm not in the best neighborhood. And I get these alerts on my phone all the time for the martial arts school right here. And right behind us, there are a whole bunch of condos and apartments. And because I have a, self, I have a security system, almost every night, I, or every morning I wake up and there are 10 to 15 posts. Someone broke into my car. Uh, the police are here, there's a helicopter overhead. And they live there, they don't have a choice, right? And so you, I, I get these comments every once in a while, you know, well, well don't be in that neighborhood. Well, they don't have a choice. I was, at the, I was going home from uh, work last night. I stopped at the 7-Eleven to get gas. And the one uh, guy stops me and he's asking me, you know, what do you think about my car? Am I gonna get pulled over? Cause he had it kind of Jerry rigged. Someone had popped the lock. He's living out of his car for um, the last six weeks because uh, gas prices keep going up. His rent went up 500 bucks. He makes 17 bucks an hour. He can't afford his rent. So he's a little bit more desperate. He's living out of his car. He's, he's getting jumped every couple nights, he said. He's like, you know, where do you think I could park? And he, he did, wasn't asking for anything. He was just, I think he was just uh, frustrated. He was trying to find some answers and I was trying to help a little bit. Then I go into the store and I see the guy in front of me buying milk and bread. And uh, he's paying with change. And the one guy's really annoyed. The, the manager would come in, he's like, you know, uh, paying the, you know, he's counting it out in an angry way. And the lady standing next to him, she said, um, so I'm like, you know, well, he's got to feed his kids, right? You know, what, what, are, you, what are you complaining about? Uh, you, you, you want me to do that? <laughs> but, but that's the reality that we're living in in some, some areas. Some people, are, that's their reality, is my point. So if that's your reality, you have to carry a stick for self-defense. You don't have any other options. You don't want to carry a gun you, or you can't carry a gun for whatever reason. Then this is an option. It's homemade. It's less than 10 bucks. Or like I said, find a piece of wood, find an old broom, cut it down. You've got a perfect size self-defense tool, homemade self-defense tool. So you're walking, you have it in your hand. There are two ways you're going to get it into the other hand. I always, if, if you have to, you can from here immediately thrust. And I want you to adopt that mentality. Immediate direct explosive. This is another principle of self-defense. Immediate, direct, explosive. Immediate means right now. As soon as you understand, you no longer can hesitate. You understand that you are in imminent danger, stick that right in his face. I mean, just from here to here. And if you practice it now, when there isn't a situation, even if you don't have something to hit, you just practice in the air, practice in the air. Try to keep, see how I keep this in line with my body? Don't let your elbow come up. If your elbow comes up, then you're shifting the work to the shoulder. If you hit impact, like his body, he's moving forward, that can hurt your shoulder, dislocate the shoulder, tear those uh, ligaments or the muscles in there, or strain them. If you keep it here, just like a boxer's jab, boxers should punch like this, coming from the body and out, not like this, 
that's, 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 you know, you might be fighting a certain way and it comes over the top, but most, like the jabs, all the punches come from here, right? Comes out and comes back. Same is true for this strike. From here, straight in. You can also bring it up and you can thrust straight in and down. You can strike with one side, you can strike with the other side. But what's better than that is if you can get it into the other hand. So you get it into the other hand either by turning here or by turning over. It's as simple as that. So immediate direct explosive, if you have to, straight in, but then it's in the other hand. There's your angular strike. You can slide the hands to other positions. There's an angular strike from the other side. So I just, I strike here and I strike here. And so this is now something that you can practice, practice keeping the strike in front of your body. Notice that I'm not coming down. I'm not coming from outside. I want to keep it as close to the center of my body and coming forward. If you look from here to here, that's the fastest strike. That's the second principle or second part of that principle, which is direct, immediate direct. Direct is that shortest distance between two points is the straight line. So if I'm here, shortest distance, straight in, that's why my elbow doesn't come up straight in. Second one from the shoulder, I'm keeping it between me and the threat. And if he comes in, closes that distance very quickly, and I'm trying to strike out here, now I'm all blocked up. If I'm in here, if, even if he's right on top of me, I can still, with a lot of power, a lot of force, because here it is, rotating the shoulders and the hips, extending the arm, and of course, if you can move your body forward, getting the weight of your body into the strike, that makes it a lot more effective. So those are basic, basic techniques from this position into this position, or into this position. We went over from here, if I'm in this position, I come in, I can bring it down, I can bring it over the top, I can thrust in through the body, I can change very quickly from here to here. So I can strike here, I can strike here, I can bring it down at an angle. These are all very hard strikes and it keeps it in front of my body again. I'm not doing a big wide strike, I'm just pushing and I'm turning and it comes down a little bit. Now, per personally, you'll, you'll probably find that this one is a, a lot more comfortable, a lot more, uh, feels more natural. However, you might also want to practice with this a little bit. From this position, you don't have to do any of these angular strikes. You can just go straight into his face. Then come back af as you retreat from striking his head. Now he's falling back, finish him off, drop that into his throat or into his chest or along the side of his face as he's falling back and then finish off with a simple thrusting motion for self-defense. All of this is for self-defense. All right, so those are just the basic ways that I want you to train. Some of the things that you should also do at the beginning and the end is loosen up and strengthen the arms, the forearms, the wrists. Do these motions here, but go slow at first. If you've got some tightness, you have some injury, or some arthritis, go very slow. If you start doing this a lot and you're getting a lot of pain and you're saying I'm in pain every time I do it, then you're going too fast. So slow it down. Another thing that is very helpful is to go through the fingers and work on extension, flexion and extension. So when I bring it down, I'm pulling in. When I bring it around, I'm pushing out. So my hands are going like this constantly, but they're just doing one finger at a time. This is a great way to get rid of any type of um, elbow pain. People get, sometimes when you use martial arts weapons or self-defense tools of this nature, people will get some uh, tendonitis in the elbow or tennis elbow, then this is a good way to address that, keep you from getting that. You go in one direction, if you can, switch and go back the other direction. It's a little bit harder, I haven't done that enough yet, but that's basically the idea. And if that's, if that's hard, it's hard, you know? If it's hard for you, fine. It doesn't mean it's impossible. It doesn't mean you won't be able to do it, just say I can't do it yet. And you will, I promise. Just keep moving in that direction. Another way, we're using this size staff especially, or this, the Hanbo, the Japanese Hanbo, which is what this is based on, or the walking stick, is to do a wrist roll into a catch with the other hand. So this is my left hand, I'm gonna wrist roll around. And as I bring it up, I stop it by putting this hand here and I push it back over the back of the other hand. 
what that does is that gets me familiar with how this moves through space and time. It's good for timing and distance, spatial awareness, proprioception, but it's also building strength in my hands. That little bit of catching it every time, starting to toughen up my hands a little bit, give me a little bit of callus. For those of you who've done martial arts where you strike with your hands, you might be familiar with striking things before you break uh, blocks or uh, stone or, or wood or whatever. And that's, that's all it is. It's just a way to disguise repetition. But mostly I want you to get really good at not dropping your weapon. And when you do things like this, this is gonna help you get really good at not dropping your weapon. You'll be able to spin it like that. So one last thing, when you are here and you like this type of topic, you like training with homemade self-defense tools, please give me a thumbs up so that I know to make more of these and leave me some comments. If you have one, if you already made your own homemade self-defense hanbo or walking stick for self-defense, put that in the comment section below and then comment on someone else's comment. So, you know, if they, if they used poplar, hey, how did the poplar work out? Or they used hickory, do you like hickory or you like oak? Ask each other the same questions that you asked me because some of these things you know more than I do. You've done more than I do or your life experience is different. I learn when I read your comments. So I highly encourage, leave lots of comments and then talk to each other. This is a self-defense community and we're all learning together. We're all training together. Um, and your comments are great and your chats are amazing. I'd love to get a lot of the chats. I wish there was a way to put the chats in the comment section so that later when people watch this back, they can see, and I know sometimes it plays the chats, but if it were, they were comments, there could be more of a discussion. It's just this discussion that I like. So, and finish always, like you said, finish with finger rolls, get those fingers moving, get them healthy, get them strong, get the blood in there and keep training. I'm gonna try to make one more of these today, depending on what my timing looks like. I do have time now, but um, I'm stuck. I don't know, should I work on what do we want to work on next? Uh, it, it, part of me really wants to get the chucks out and start spinning chucks, but then part of me wants to get the tonfa out and do another tonfa video because we kind of did that a little bit last week. So if you have a if you have a, um, a suggestion, put it in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys in just a little bit. Thank you very much.